Now, let us have understanding of a point before we proceed for the next question. See, in case of the debentures, in case of the preference shares, we have the concept of redeemable and irredeemable. Like that, say we have two concepts. In case of equity share, whether we will have two concepts or single concept, please write in the chat box. So friends, we understand that say in case of the debentures, we have redeemable and irredeemable two types of securities. In case of preference shares also, we have two types of securities, redeemable and irredeemable. But in case of equity shares, we have only irredeemable security. We don't have the concept of the redeemable security. That is what we understand. So we understand that so over here, so we are going to have understanding of calculation of the cost of equity, so which is of course issued for perpetuity. Now, whenever a security is issued for perpetuity, then how do we compute the cost? Let us recall that KD is calculated as interest into 1 minus T divided by amount. This is the way the KD is calculated. KP is calculated as preference dividend divided by amount. This is the way the KP is calculated. Wherein we understand that say in case of the perpetual security, so this is what's so the way we make the calculation of the cost of capital. Now listen carefully what I am going to speak. See, in case of the debenture, what will happen? That whatever the amount of the interest, that is going to remain same. In case of the preference share, the amount of the preference dividend is going to remain same. But that is not the case in case of equity shares. In case of the equity shares, we understand, so the equity dividend is going to grow at the rate G. G is the growth rate. So cost of equity is calculated. Cost of equity is calculated using dividend discount model approach as D1 upon P0 plus growth rate. I repeat that cost of equity can be calculated using dividend discount model approach using the formula D1 upon P0 plus C. See what is the logic over here? Let us understand. As a company, I get the price of the security today from the investor. So over here it is P0. P stands for the price and 0 stands for the current price. So instead of amount received, over here it is written as P0. Because that is the amount which I receive so for equity share issue. The term D1 stands for dividend which I am supposed to pay at the end of the year 1 to the investor. So the numerator is the cost and denominator is the amount what I receive from the investor. And uh, say so we add G growth rate. What is reason for adding the growth rate sir? The answer to the question is very simple. We know that say so this amount of the dividend is going to grow. So whatever the rate at which the dividend is going to grow is added over here in terms of the growth rate. That is the way we compute the cost of equity. Now friends, in case of the new issue of the equity share, we can very well understand that say over here, flotation cost will be deducted. Why? Because we understand that say the company is required to incur the cost in terms of the flotation cost at the time of raising funds. So flotation cost is deducted from P0 to compute that say the amount that will be received by the company. Dear students over here, Apart from this dividend discount model approach, there is an another method by which the cost of equity can be calculated and that is given a technical name as CAPM. The term CAPM stands for Capital Asset Pricing Model. 
with this we make the computation of cost of equity now using capm say how to make the calculation of the cost of equity that we are going to understand slightly later on however friends always remember whenever you have been provided with the beta information whenever you are provided with beta information we have to apply capm for calculation of the cost of capital okay in that case how to do answer that we are going to discuss slightly later on dear students one more method that we have for cost of equity calculation which is given a name as yield to maturity method and at the same time it is also given a name as irr method so irr or yield to maturity method that we have for calculation of the cost of equity in that say how to make the calculation of the answer is very similar to say what we have in case of the kd and kp for redeemable security with irr method it is exactly the same that is what you can say irr stands for internal rate of return ytm stands for yield to maturity of course that is also what we are going to discuss next we are going to understand calculation of the cost of equity using earning approach that is one more method that say we have called earning approach in case of earning approach we make the calculation of the cost of equity uh, in our chapter called dividend policy there is a method called earning approach which we apply for calculating cost of equity and so that is included in our um, a chapter which is given a name as dividend policy in this chapter we do not have say any question as such to be solved using the earning approach so what there we are going to discuss say so the earning approach to be adopted for ke calculation so we can conclude something like this that for the purpose of cost of equity calculation we have four methods the first one is given a name as technically called dividend discount model approach the first is given a name as dividend discount model approach that is what's the method number 1 second method is called capm that is capital asset pricing model that method is required to be applied if beta information is given uh, beta is a word that say we come across in our chapter of leverage also third that is a method called ytm yield to maturity or it is given a name as irr method and the fourth is earning approach please write down a note <coughs> heading write down cost of equity in bracket write down ke first point for ke cal <coughs> ke calculation comma we have following methods in the right down a d d m in bracket right down dividend discount model approach b c a p m capital asset pricing model c y t m slash irr method in bracket write down 
yield to maturity or internal rate of return method d earning approach so these are the four methods that we have second point we will follow CAPM when beta information is given IRR slash YTM method will be followed if it is specifically given fourth Learning approach will be followed for questions in dividend policy. Full stop. Next point, generally we will follow dividend discount model approach. Full stop. In that cost of equity will be found as under in that for existing equity shares and for new equity shares existing equity shares in that D1 upon P0 plus growth rate. And for new equity shares, it is D1 upon P0 minus flotation cost plus growth rate. The term P0 stands for current market price of equity share. The term F stands for Flotation cost. G stands for growth rate. D1 stands for expected slash projected. 
slash next year dividend per share that is what we understand and as far as d1 is concerned d1 is calculated as e1 into 1 minus b and as far as the growth rate is concerned it is calculated as b into r so the term e1 stands for the expected projected or next year earning per share b stands for the retention ratio r stands for the rate of earning and 1 minus b stands for dividend payout ratio okay let us have understanding how to calculate the that that's uh, let us have understanding of one more point now friends over here you can see that in the formula we require the dividend at the end of year one and this is what's in the price of equity share right now now number of times what happens at say we are provided with the information about uh, just paid dividend we are provided with the information about last paid dividend we are provided with the information about currently paying dividend like that information is provided to us we are provided with the information about the dividend which has just been paid and uh, so we are provided with the current price at the same time and we don't have the information for the next year dividend i hope that everybody is able to understand this is year 0 timeline this is end of year 1 basically for the purpose of calculation of cost of equity we require d1 however we are provided with the d0 information in that case if directly d1 is given you will apply this formula but it may happen that say you are provided with the d0 information then in that case you are required to compute the d1 based on d0 so in that case you will apply the formula like this d1 is equal to d0 into 1 plus c raised to 1 that is the simple formula so what will happen we understand that say this is d0 that is called just paid dividend or last paid dividend or currently paid dividend and then so you are required to compute the d1 by applying a formula like this d0 into 1 plus please write down this formula so friends basically for all the questions you don't have to you don't have to apply this formula you have to look to the information to the question and based on that say you are required to apply this formula so this some formula may be required may not be required look into the information given this is what we understand so write down a note for this sometimes it may happen that we are provided with last year dividend per share comma however we require next year dividend per share in that case we will apply following formula
प्लीज रेड ऑन दिस फॉर्मूला डी वन इज इक्वल टू डी जीरो इंटू वन प्लस सी लेटस सी द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन मेसर्स रिलायंस इंडस्ट्रीज लिमिटेड पेज डिविडेंड ऑफ रुपीज फाइव मार्केट प्राइस ऑफ द इक्विटी शेयर इज एटी रुपीज न्यू इश्यू इज सब्जेक्ट टू टू परसेंट फ्लोटेशन कॉस्ट यू रिक्वायर टू कैलकुलेट द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज कॉस्ट ऑफ एग्जिस्टिंग इक्विटी शेयर एंड सेकेंड क्वेश्चन इज कॉस्ट ऑफ न्यू इक्विटी शेयर आई रिक्वेस्ट यू टू कैलकुलेट आंसर फॉर बोथ द क्वेश्चन एंड पुट यूर आंसर इन द चैट बॉक्स लेट एस हेव अंडरस्टैंडिंग हाउ टू कैलकुलेट द आंसर now cost of equity is required to be found for existing equity shares so in that case so the working is required to be done like this d1 upon p0 plus z we will not take into account of rotation cost in the first part of the question that is in this calculation for existing equity shares because you don't have to incur the flotation cost for the purpose of calculating the cost of existing shares the question is providing that so the company is paying dividend of rupees 5 no growth information is given so the next year dividend will be 5 itself current market price is 80 and the growth rate is 0 Five upon eighty, that is zero point zero six two five. So accordingly, we can calculate the answer. Zero point zero six two five. That is six point twenty five percentage. That is the way the cost of equity can be found for existing equity shares. Next, cost of equity for new equity shares. As far as for new equity shares, we can work out the answer like this: D one upon P zero minus flotation cost plus growth rate. What is D one? D one is the expected or projected dividend. That is an amount of rupees five divided by P zero is again eighty rupees. Now, generally, friends, we deduct the flotation cost calculated on the face value. But in this question, unfortunately, the face value information is not given, so it will be calculated on the market price due to lack of information. So it is eighty rupees into two percentage. Whatever the answer that say we have in that that is to that, the growth rate is added, and the growth rate is provided as zero for this question. So five rupees divided by eighty minus two percent of eighty rupees is one rupee sixty pesos, and the growth rate is zero. So five upon seventy eight point four. Whatever the answer that we have plus zero. Accordingly, we can calculate the answer. So five divided by Seventy-eight point four zero point zero six three eight is the answer. Zero point zero six three eight. That is six point thirty-eight percentage. Please write an answer. Cost of equity for new equity share. Okay. Write on a small note for this. in this question no information is given for face value of security so we assume that flotation cost
will be found on issue price. That is rupees 80. That is what we understand. 